Hello and welcome to this session on collaboration in and outside the classroom. I'm Ella Coles, one of its Learning's Pedagogical Consultants, and I'm going to talk to you today about how its learning can be used not just as a resource bank, but as an environment for collaboration and collaborative learning. Group work has been used widely in classroom teaching for years as a way of not only promoting collaborative learning, but also of improving learners' motivation. Collaborative learning involves a shift of emphasis from teacher-centred to more learner-centred learning by enabling students to work in small groups with a common goal, which in turn empowers them to engage in peer teaching, learning and assessment to show what they know, understand and can do and identify what they've yet to learn in a low risk situation. The UK Spring Project, an earlier work carried out in the USA by Stevens and Slavin, are just two examples of research which have highlighted a range of other pos positive effects um, of successfully managed group collaboration work. And far from hindering learning, the evidence shows that it actually supports academic progress and higher conceptual learning. As well as the academic benefits, it also promotes the development of important life and social skills, including self and mutual respect, organisation, cooperation, negotiation, flexibility, compromise, delegation, accountability and leadership. All of these skills are really important for employment as well. So let's take a look at how you can adapt the platform and use the tools you have available in its learning to support collaborative working, whether it's a task in which students team together to explore a question or create a meaningful project, a group of students discussing a lecture, or students from different schools working together over the internet on a shared assignment. The key thing here is that the group doesn't have to be in the same place or even working at the same time which is a real benefit if you're working on a cross-school project or with students who spend much of their time in the workplace or at home. As with any joint effort, the groups who will be working together are going to need an online space in which to meet and share. This could be an existing its learning course or one created expressly for a specific project. To make it quick and easy for the teacher or facilitator to manage, it's a good idea to create groups in advance. In the course that you're going to use, go to More and Course Groups and then create the first group by giving it a name and then on the next screen select members of the group. And save. Continue in this way until all your groups are created and you can create and use course groups for any purpose. Ability groups, project groups, activity carousel groups. It's up to you. Once your groups are there, you could begin to use them to assign permissions. Next, your learners will need an area in which to share, discuss and plan. It's also likely you're going to want to give your learners a mix of teacher directed tasks and support and also give them the opportunity to take control and manage their own area. The default settings for an its learning course allow any participant with a teacher role to add activities and resources and any participant with a student role to view and work with those activities and resources. But by modifying the default permissions to folders or even individual elements in the resources area, you can achieve much more flexibility. By creating a folder or folders and modifying the permissions, you can give learners the rights to upload documents or create links, create pages and notes so that they can research and share information with their group. They can also do things like create quizzes of their own as we've got here, for example. And as a teacher, you'll always be able to see the content that they upload, but otherwise the folder can be private to that group and other students won't even see it in the resources area. If other students need to be able to see the contents of another group's folder, the permissions can be added to enable them to do that. 
Just remember that once a specific permission has been set on a folder or element, the permissions have to be managed manually. To return to default settings, simply remove all the specific permissions and save it. So if we just have a quick look at how to set those permissions in your course, go to the resources, just create my folder for the group A. And save. You see my folder down here now. And if I go across to the functions menu in the top right hand corner and select permissions, I can select now who may add new elements to this folder. Here are groups that I set up in the course groups earlier. And if I click on the group for group A and add and click on save. Now, when I go in as my student and click on resources, in any other folder, I don't have permissions to add anything, but in my own group folder, I can now add research notes, content, resources to share with the group. As well as sharing resources and research, your learners can use its learning uh, and its tools to discuss and plan their work. A discussion forum is a great way for group members to be able to post suggestions, comment on each other's ideas and critique each other's work. One big benefit of the discussion forum is that participants' contributions can be made asynchronously as and when they're able to, for example, around work commitments or other subject work, or just when they've had a chance to think about it. This has the effect of evening out the playing field for less confident learners giving them time to think about their input before contributing and enabling them to collaborate on their own terms, where before they may have taken a back seat and not contributed anything. Once again, you as a teacher can monitor all the discussion boards and add comments to guide discussion. By linking a task to the discussion board, you also have means of providing assessment grades and feedback to students on their contributions. You and your students will see alerts to new discussion posts on the home page and course overview uh, news feeds. And the personal reports in status and follow up will show how each student is participating in discussions. Later this year, you'll also see this in the new 360 degree reports. Or for a more immediate conversation, how about video conferencing? Its learnings in built conference tool can be added to any course and used by small groups to discuss and collaborate remotely at any time. This simple tool will accommodate up to 10 people on audio or four on video and it's really useful for communicating um, when people are off site, perhaps on work experience, work placements. But if you need a larger group, you could also work with uh, our optional integration with Zoom. This will give you the option of working with up to 100 people at a time with screen sharing and also um, recording facilities. Other third party tools for planning and collaboration can be embedded in its learning, such as Padlet, which gives a simple notice board where unlimited numbers of people can collaborate and see each other's contributions in real time. You could also embed mind mapping tools such as MindMaster or Bubbleus, so that group members could work out their ideas together, even when they're not in the same classroom. Have you explored using its learnings integration with Google or Office 365? If you haven't, I really urge you to take a look. 
Not only can you upload copies of resources or link directly to live resources in your Google Drive or OneDrive, but you can set collaborative tasks in its learning, which sort out all the permissions and access for your students without you having to do anything. Signed in here as a teacher, I'm adding a task to my course. Give it a title. And add some instructions. Now the tasks in, in, in its learning with all the other resources for this particular unit of work, what I'm actually going to do is ask my students to work on a Google Sheet. Set the date, the deadline for the task, just as we would do normally. And here you can see that it's assigned to, at the moment, default is all participants of my course. But this is where those handy course groups come in. So I can set it just for a subgroup of my participants in my class. And then under fewer options, I'm going to click on use Google Apps. And select the Google Sheet that I want them to work on. Now this will set the permissions, the edit permissions for the people in that group. I can also add any supporting documents or uh, scaffolding under add files, set the assessment scale and save my task. So my Google task is in the same place as all my other resources. I can add it to my It's Learning Planner, mark it, have it assessed in the markbook in its, in its learning. My student Yasmina now logs in. She sees on her to-do list the task that I've set and clicks straight through to it. She gets direct access to the Google Sheet, still in my Google Drive, for her to work on and she can work on that in its learning. At the same time or at a different time, Sebastian also logs in, accesses his task straight into Google Drive. Users just need to log in once the first time they connect to its learning and Google integration. After that they go straight through. You can see Yasmina's evidence. She's not submitted this yet. It's working in real time. He puts in his contribution and it's auto saved. Andy the teacher can go back to the task and click through to the live document at any stage and use the tools within Google to see the contributions of the group and look at version history, who's done what in order to make the assessments within the task. Another way of setting group work is through the assignment. Here I've set a normal assignment with an attachment, set the due date, and then in the settings, as one of the options, I have group activity. If I tick this box, I've got two choices. The students create their own groups, or I set the groups that they work in. Create the assignment and that is now set for my students. When my student Emily logs in and accesses the task that I've set or the assignment that I've set, she will have the message that it's a group assignment and that she has to elect her group. In the meantime, if Evan logs in and accesses the same task, the same assignment, he will see that Emily has already set the group up. He can edit the group or accept the group as it has been set up. Back to Emily, who has been nominated to submit the group presentation, and she will, just as normal, Browse to the file, attach it to 
the assignment and submit it. Teacher Tom clicks through to the work that's been submitted and he can now see that that group exists on his list of students and he can open it and assess it as normal. If Tom had chosen the other option to assign it to course groups, just go in and edit this. We can see that just a simple task of selecting use course groups, that will use the course groups that have previously been set up in his course. And in this case, what Emily would see when she goes through to her assignment is a message saying that this is a group assignment. Please choose the group first. When she clicks on the select your group button, she will see the group that she belongs to. And in exactly the same way, she can submit the group assessment if that has been agreed. And again, Tom will see his students organised in the groups that they are in for the submission of this particular assignment. We've had a look at um, collaborative assignments and tasks with the teacher doing the um, assessment of those tasks. But one of the uh, important elements of collaborative learning is also the team members critiquing and assessing each other's work, giving feedback uh, on their group members' um, contributions. In its learning, we've tried to make this, we've started to try and make this easier through the assignment tool. In this example, I'm logged in as the teacher, Andy, and I'm going to add an assignment to my course for an activity that I want my students to write an essay, but also not only to submit their own essay, but to assess and add feedback for their peers. So instructions go in, including how I want them to work with each other's work, and then the settings as normal, a deadline, select the assessment scale, and save the assignment. So far, it's just like any other assignment, but this time I'm going to go and change the permissions to from the functions menu at the top. Click on permissions, just as we've been doing in the past. We're setting permissions on an element. Select who can evaluate this particular piece of work. And I'm going to use all of the course groups in my class for this particular assignment and save. And I'll be shown a screen that confirms that those permissions have been granted. When Andy's student logs on, Yadmina, she'll see her essay and click through to it. But now that the permissions have been changed, she has two views. The teacher's view of all the students and an area for her to submit her own answer. She'll use the answer button on the Your Answer tab to submit her essay in the same way as usual. Attach it to the assignment and submit. And in the same way, her classmate Sebastian will also click through to the assignment. He too will see the two tabs and he will submit his own answer from the Your Answer tab. Attach my finished essay and submit. Once everyone's uh, submitted their essay, 
they can go through to the all students list on the assignment. Here Seb's gone through and clicking on Yasmina's work and he could open it in the inbuilt office online in its learning and use the tools in Word Online in this case to highlight, to comment and to assess his peers work. Now I'm sure I don't need to mention that students will need some preparation and training for this but it is an excellent way of encouraging learner involvement and responsibility giving them a deeper understanding of the subject and skills and lifting them from the role of passive learner to active learner with a deeper approach to learning. When teacher Andy views the uh, submissions for this particular assignment from the student list, he will be able to see that on Yasmina's essay, not only her own submission, obviously, but also Sebastian's annotations and comments on the work that he's done. And you can see from the top here that uh, this is a live document, two people are editing it at the moment, and a certain amount of colour coding perhaps for uh, differentiating between student comments and teacher comments. I said that this was the first step in enabling peer assessment in its learning. What I've just shown you is there now, but in the summer we'll be releasing a more comprehensive tool in the assignment. You'll be able to enable peer assessments by selecting require peer assessment in the settings when creating or editing an assignment. With peer assessment, students' answers are distributed when the deadline passes. Because of this, you'll need to set a deadline before you can enable peer assessment. When you've set a deadline and enable peer assessment, you can choose how many peers each student can assess. And that'll be between one and five. Group assessments are disabled when peer assessment is enabled and vice versa. Peer assessment is disabled if you already have made the assignment a group activity. Until the deadlines pass, the assignment will look the same for the student as a regular assignment. The only difference is that they can see in the right hand panel that they'll have to review a certain number of peers when the deadline has passed. After the deadline, its learning will automatically assign the configured number of students um, or answers between the students that have submitted an answer. So the student will see the assignment on their task list again, but with the action Assess Peers. When the student opens the assignment, the student he or she needs to assess are shown on the top of the page. And then below that, the students that will peer assess their work are shown. When assessing a peer, the student has all the same assessment options as a teacher would have. So they can view and annotate on the submitted document um, they can assess with a rubric if the teachers have um, provided one. And this is a really good idea because this is giving the students the support that they need in order to know what they're looking for. Um, they've got the criteria against which they're actually assessing the piece of work and which they can then use and internalise for their own future work. They'll also be able to um, download a submitted answer and annotate it locally um, if that is uh, a requirement. And finally, the teacher will be able to see the progress of peer assessment in the status column of the answer grid. Uh, this displays how many students have already peer assessed their um, students. Uh, for example, in this screenshot, one student has already peer assessed Eric. And then from the assess page, the teacher can access the peer assessments a student has received um, and that this student is given to others. And it'll also be possible for the teacher to give an overall assessment as they can do for a regular assignment. 
If peer assessments help students to inter internalise criteria and takes the mystery out of assessment, self-assessment and reflection should result in personal growth and it's an important skill to develop for lifelong learning. Once students enter the workforce, it's an imperative that they can critically evaluate their own performance and you can use its learning to help train them in this. You may think of assignments as being something which are used for assessment. I suppose in a way it is, but they are also really useful for setting a task of self-evaluation and reflection for your learners. It means that it is something that can be tracked and monitored and you can follow up as a teacher. The students themselves have also got that available in their course as part of their submissions throughout their work and they can look back on this for revision purposes, for just seeing how far they've come, uh, which in itself can be a really useful exercise. The feedback that you can get from um, the self-evaluation will also mean that you as a teacher will know where your learners are struggling and where you may need to do a little bit more uh, on a particular topic. You could also set up a simple survey question uh, where this, the learners are actually assessing themselves against a matrix judging themselves, giving, them a rate, giving themselves a rating uh, against a number of different criteria, for example. And this can be copied and used again and again, a good way of working and a pattern of work to set your students and get them used to. I hope you found this session on collaboration um, helpful, uh, informative and that it's given you a few ideas for different ways that you could be using its learning to support you and your learners uh, in a more collaborative working way. Thanks ever so much for your time and your attention and uh, if you have any questions just reach out and, uh, and contact either your account managers or any of the pedagogical consultants. Thank you very much and goodbye.